Good, doing well. <laughs> glad to have you on. And uh, also, uh, Gavin, we're glad to have you on as well. Uh, I know you're on the phone. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, so, you know, we just went through that combat situation with technical difficulties, but we got through it. It only lasted a few seconds. <laughs> but tell us a little bit about who wants to lead off with the uh, Illinois Department of Veterans Affairs state benefits information. What should we know as veterans right now? Because that, that's a kind of a moving time scale, right? Uh, there are benefits that change, depends on when you served. And it, also, there new, there's new legislation always coming out different changes in the background. So what should we know about the veterans' benefits? Uh, I, 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 uh, Go for um, it. I think the one thing is the timeliness and filing for a lot of the benefits. Okay. Um, a lot of people often wait, but the best thing to do is always file when, you know, as soon as something happens. So, um, a lot of people don't understand that you only have a year from the time you separate from the military to actually apply for the benefit. Mm -hmm. After that, uh, it is assumed that it happened after service. Oh, okay. So, there's sort of a timeline where it gets cut off. So, those, those people who uh, come home, uh, what about those veterans who come home and let's say they have PTSD or something that precluded them from interacting with the system. Is there anything that they can do? Um, if uh, And sometimes you have things that will show up later, you know, if I say a cancer or something, uh, is, is there a way that they can actually um, approach that issue? Right. So a lot of times, um, one, seeking treatment at the VA hospitals, various VA hospitals and clinics, mm -hmm. and two, um, actually sitting down with the vet service officer, no matter what organization they're with, and, and having a conversation about the mm -hmm. Normally, there is a benefits, um, uh, a benefits actual summary that's given to veterans, soldiers as they're departing active duty. Um, mm -hmm. But always speak to a veteran service officer to go over those benefits. Okay, so that's a VSO. Yeah. That's what we call a VSO, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's where we are. Uh -huh. To piggyback off what um, Gavin was saying, any of it that a veteran decides that they want to file a claim, say years later, because that's what we see and that is what is occurring um, most often than not, mm -hmm. the burden of proof is uh, pretty much on the veteran as to obtaining the evidence. So mm -hmm. basically, in order to file a claim, the veteran needs to have three things. They need to have an injury or something that happened, that happened in service. They need to have a level of chronicity, which means how often after service did they go seek medical treatment. And then the third thing is a nexus. And the nexus is what ties your injury to the military service. So after service, you can, uh, most of the time when people leave service, they get their military, whichever branch they give the veterans, their, serve, their medical records. Mm -hmm. um, what veterans can do is they can take those medical records to their doctor and say, hey, these are what the injuries that I um, sustained while I was in service. Is it possible that I'm still suffering from these injuries today because of the injuries that I had in service. Mm -hmm. Then what happened is the doctor can write a medical opinion based on the information that they are reading in the veteran's medical records. And then at that point, uh, if the doctor's medical statement is plausible or favorable, then we as VSO will go ahead and submit that as a fully developed claim from, you know, along with the veteran's medical records because the medical records will show, will give that, um, that injury that happened in, in service and that nexus being that the, the injury initially started in service. Hmm. You know, if, if the injury is uh, severe, is there a role that their um, significant others and spouse or, you know, uh, family members play in that? You know, as far as can they, um, you know, come forward if the person, let's say they have a really severe traumatic, traumatic brain injury or, um, you know, something that is incapacitating them, is, is there something that people can do uh, to support them in that process? Absolutely. Uh, that is called, they can actually uh, write lay statements. 
And those money statements are statements from loved ones and and and, and family members that say this is how the veteran was before his service. This is how the veteran is after his service. After that that um, injury or that traumatic situation. So basically, it's it's just a stable stable. You know, this is who the veteran was before. This is how they were after that event. And this is who they are now. These are the things that I've observed. So that's what that lay statement does. It, it gives, uh, it paints a picture, or uh, you know, for the for an examiner to look at uh, to see what's been going on with that veteran, and they're very valuable. Yeah, because I've heard a lot of that, you know, especially in the area of like PTSD, where, you know, a spouse or a significant other will say, oh, this person is waking up with nightmares or they're, you know, that they're really destroying the relationship or they're not the person that I know. Uh, so those things sound like it's important, right, for that to be documented in, in some kind of format or another, you know, some uh, that they can turn in. Uh, will they just turn it into the VA itself or how, how do they go about that process? Well, what they can do is um, they, there is a couple of options. Now, they can file a claim for e-benefit, or they can actually uh, visit their local service officer. Uh, we have, you know, with our approximately seven officers all over the state of Illinois, uh, and um, get the piggyback off the road, driving the state area, is really, really important if the veteran can also get statements from um, studies that serve with them. Those are really, really important because they were there boots on the ground with the veteran. A lot of times it's hard for them to, especially like people from like this or Vietnam era or food, but it is really imperative for us. Um, it, it would really help a veteran case, especially if it's been years, 40 plus years, 10 plus mm -hmm. years, if they could get some evidence from um, individuals that serve with them. Okay, so so as a battle buddy, your your time doesn't end with your battle buddy uh, just overseas in the field, right? <laughs> you, you still have a responsibility <laughs> to your battle, battle buddies here. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> However, now, a lot of times, uh, what will happen is they will get denied. There will mm -hmm. be, you know, things due to lack of evidence, mm -hmm. Uh, the claim was improperly developed. The veteran didn't um, come. To, they didn't present enough medical evidence, which is really important. Yes. And then when that happened, um, my team and I—I um, I work in the claim management center. Um, and shout out to my supervisor, Jeff Petrowski, who is with me. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so what we do is. <laughs> so, you know, we receive uh, documents and things like that in regards to the veterans' claims from the US the USDVA. Um, and we, file, we actually file appeals on the veterans' behalf. And we represent, mm. um, we represent veterans on the federal, federal law judges in Washington, D.C. Um, mm. We're not only just um, the field officers. Like a lot of the officers out in the field, like the rest of the family, you know, officers, but we're the only office family on appeal at the DPA level. And what, what happens is all of them flood through our office. So uh, anytime a veteran is denied in the state of Illinois, eventually, if they decide to appeal it, we get it. It's, it's, it's approximately three of us in the office that handle all of the appeals. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for veterans. Um, I say, I listen, it is very, very important for you all to get the medical, your medical documentation um, to uh, prove that you do have a condition. Um, if you have to go and appeal all uh, evidence that you have previously submitted, uh, because now what you do what is called a supplemental claim, and you have to submit new evidence. Or you can do like a higher level review where you have a different review or review the evidence that you have. But in most cases, when the veteran appears, they, they try to go and get new evidence. So, okay, yes, yes, yes. Right, this is supportive evidence. So, yeah, okay. Uh -huh. Oh, go ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. If I may, mm -hmm. uh, Donna's, because Donna's works in the claims management 
center, and they particularly they focus on the appeal process a lot. Yeah. And I always tell veterans when they come to see me that it's not just finding the magical words to put on the <laughs> to, 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 <laughs> right. to defend this and, and, and to get the claim. I always say the one the most I actually start off in the claims management center and mm-hmm. the one thing I did learn was develop it, develop it, develop it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the good thing you you know, developing your claim, you know, making making that claim as bulletproof as possible. So when somebody who you haven't talked who hasn't talked to you or I gets in front of them, they can make a decision. And, and, and it's really hard to say no. So, you know, we, you know, I'm always about developing it, you know, getting as much information, as much evidence that helps the veteran. So it's not just the VSO, it's the veteran. The veteran has to mm-hmm. feed us information so that we could present the best possible case for that to be a winning client. Um, Mm-hmm. You know, and, that, and, I, and I can't stress that enough. It's, it's we're, we're a team, you know, and it's nothing that I can do or Donis does. It's, it's not just one thing. It's it's the team concept, and you know, and if, and if it's not right, you know, we will advise you, you know, to that fact. You know, like this isn't strong enough. You know, let's keep, you know, let's keep working this or trying to develop it to the point where. It's totally bulletproof, or as bulletproof as we can make it. Yeah, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, because you can't walk in there with nothing, right? <laughs> because it, it relates to something that happened to you, and if it was an IED or RPG, or, you know, uh, you know, fall off of a jeep or whatever, there, there's got to be something that's there that you're substantiating, right? That you can uh, at least have some kind of evidence, something to say that this is what happened and where it happened and, and those kinds of things. So I understand it totally. In order to make a case, you have to, you know, have a case, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I've been in service offices. Our job is to help veterans and families file the claims with the, you know, the USDVA and make them mm-hmm. airtight. So we cannot do that if we don't have the evidence uh, available to us. A lot of times, uh, veterans just think, um, they're the, they think that we're going to go out and find all this evidence for them, but that we're going to uh, mm-hmm. bend over backwards to assist them as far as getting statements from them, from their friends and family. No. What we do is we are here to assist and guide you, you know, in the correct mm-hmm. direction. But, you know, my veterans will tell you, I will tell you no a thousand times if it's not right. Okay. <laughs> um, and they have yelled at me. They call my supervisor. They fire me. And I'm a kid because and back the I'm not going to have to. Yeah, I'm going to have to. Yeah, that's it. Um, you know, I'm not going to try to claim this is not right. plausible. I, 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 I allow yeah. them to fire it and say, hey, here's the paperwork. You go ahead and fire it. Good luck. But yes. and then they'll come back once they see how high it is. Be like, okay, we'll go with that. You know. I'm going to listen now. And then we go ahead and we do it the right way. Do it that way, yeah. That's right, yeah. That's right. I've got to say, we are a team. And um, if I cannot stress enough, it is so important to develop the claim. If they need help, we can, we can, you know, we've reached out to doctors. We've, um, you know, given templates on how to write medical opinion letters. Uh, we will do those things to assist our veterans, but it is ultimately, as my civil rights say, it is your claim and it is your job to make sure <laughs> that you provide all the documentation for the, um, um, the VA so that they can go ahead and um, either grant or deny your case. In our right. case, we try our hardest and we, we've been doing pretty good, especially in the, mm-hmm. in the appeals division um, with saying, hey, you don't have enough, or hey, okay, this is great, we'll call each other, mm-hmm. you know, I've, I've had to call other VSOs, like, hey, is this, you know, can you give me some background? It's, it's, it's most certainly a team effort, most certainly. Oh, yes, that's, that's a lot of what we do is educate mm-hmm. veterans, too, as to what their, um, their actual benefits are. Um, I think 
think I spend the bulk of my time really trying to educate, not just on uh, claims, like just earned benefits, like educational benefits, um, benefits that that may be available to family members, like educational benefits. Okay. So um, it's really truly you're you're teaching people how to access a whole new world. Uh, and uh, all new all of benefits, mm-hmm. you know, once they've gotten that service connection. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One one thing I want to ask too is like you know if you uh, if you look at it, um, there there are federal benefits, right? So we have people who did active duty service in the you know in the army, the you know Marines, the Navy, the Air Force, um, and even the Coast Guard, right? So we had people who did federal service in those uh, agencies, but then we have the National Guard, you know, the Air Guard and the Army National Guard. And I'm wondering, is there any difference? Because I'm wondering, if you're under a state authority, do you have different benefits from just the general federal benefits, or are they pretty much the same? Uh, yeah. And no. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, active duty. Active duty is the operative word. So okay. as a reservist, if you're on active duty for two weeks, then you get hurt, then you're a super pilot claim. If you're a reservist, then you get hurt, and you're not on duty, then no, you don't have a case. Okay, okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> but when we start talking like that, for example, and that an Illinois National Guardsman um, may not have uh, enough time to under his belt on active duty to 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 get the Illinois Veterans Grant. He may use the Illinois Guard Grant, and that mm-hmm. may help him pay for his tuition for any Illinois state schools. Mm-hmm. Now, um, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, the, the IVG Illinois Veterans Grant. The Illinois Veterans Grant is available to any and all service member that enlisted or joined the military from the state of Illinois. And that benefit give, is given once they've completed one full year of active duty. Mm-hmm. So they, they mm-hmm. take their initial DD-214 and they submit it to ISAC, the Illinois Student Assistance Commission, mm-hmm. and you know, almost you know, within two or three weeks, you know, they of, of, of applying for that benefit, you know, they get a hundred and twenty. They they get enough for a bachelor's, for a bachelor's degree. You know, one hundred twenty hours. If you already have uh, an associate to a bachelor's. You know, then, you know, you can keep using that benefit at any and all state-funded schools to pay for your whatever degree you're working on or, mm-hmm. or, or trade or, you know, you set, you know, so it, it's a, it's a value-added um, educational benefit. Um, you know, a lot of times I work with veterans that are service-connected to connect them to the MIPOW scholarship. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's that's for the dependence of of, uh, of veterans that may be one hundred percent permanent, permanently and totally um, uh, disabled. Mm-hmm. And so that is a it, it works the same way as the Illinois Veterans Grant, but it is for the spouse and the kids and, and, oh. and the kids and even the parents. Yeah, and the veteran and the whole yeah. Mm-hmm. We also offer other benefits so. Like, uh, we do hunting and fishing licenses for our veterans mm. who are at least 10% service connected. We also do um, camping license for those veterans who are 100% um, service connected, uh, permanent and total. Uh, we also assist veterans when their loved ones pass on um, with their burial benefits and also uh, we guide them in the direction of how to have military honors at their, um, at their loved ones. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So there are, and we also do, you know, help with other things, but um, those are some of the benefits that um, us as an agency do offer our veterans as well. And so it's an efficient license national, because I got a couple of my baddie, uh, battle buddies that are going to pull me out in June and want me to go up to Wisconsin to go fish. <laughs> so I'm not sure if I'm going to be covered. <laughs> yeah. So that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't, I think it's only for the state of Illinois. I've got to save the board and throw my line way out. Okay. <laughs> <I'll be> <laughs> <fun>. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, I want to also bring up something that um, I'm not sure if um, the veterans know as well. Mm-hmm. When a veteran will come home from um, being overseas or, um, you know, um, have served their time in the service, um, they also, um, that a really important thing for the veteran to do is to, um, I don't want to say register, but take their DD-214 to the recorder of DD's office. Um, that way, if anything ever happens to their veterans, the family members, or the spouse, or whomever can get their DD-214, so that in the event that the veteran passed or anything like that, they'll be able to have access to that veteran's DD-214. A lot of times, a lot of veterans lose them. Mm-hmm. So when they lose them, then they have to go through the National Personnel Records Center to get them, and right now, um, and PRC is closed, so they can't even get, unless it's for emergency, which is for like burial and death, um, yeah, illness. So that's another thing, if, um, if veterans, if anybody out there listening, if you're a veteran, please record your D214 with the recorder of D's office, and when you do that, it also gives you a military discount card that I use personally. Um, it will give you um, discounts to some of everyone.